Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey, and you are here. What's up? Uh, we're going to be talking today about raising prices, but first, if you are here for the first time, what is up? Have a look around. This is episode number 8080, 80 30 minute plus podcast. We've been doing it every single week for 80 weeks. That's a long, long time. So you got a lot to catch up, and hopefully this doesn't suck. And hopefully you pick out something from it and you want to go back and watch or listen to the podcast. It is available on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, blah, blah, blah. All those places. And, of course, YouTube, where we have our conversation. So if you want to go and chat with us, go to YouTube, pick a channel, uh, pick an episode, and uh, just search WCR Nation and you will find it. Uh, if you are one of the elite, one of the cool kids, one of the epic playmakers, you watch every episode, you thumbs up every video on YouTube, you've given us a review on iTunes, you've shared our content, and most importantly, you have ordered supplies through me, huh? then what is up? It is because of you. I had somebody actually send me in. I say something weird every week, like, hey, it's because of you that I get to blah, blah. And somebody texted me. Uh, that said, um, it's because of your uh, shows that I get to drink uh, name brand bottled water or something like that. It was awesome. So thanks. If you are watching, it is because of you that I make my cheddar. So please, please order through me. I'm asking. Uh, this is always like the weird beggy part. I don't mean it to be that way. But uh, if you do have an order to put in, please don't hesitate to shoot me a text. Say, hey, what's up? It's in my cart. It takes you no more time to do that. It doesn't cost you any extra and I make credit for that. My number is 862-312-2026. Of course, I'm a window cleaning resource rep, so check out everything that we have to offer. Okay. Well, this week we are going to do a couple uh, shout-outs. First and foremost to uh, Michael Martinez. What up, man? Chase Palmer, the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, Mike Jensen from Mountain View Window Cleaning out of Vancouver, Washington. Vancouver, Washington? Vancouver. There you go. That sounds like I'm saying that word wrong, but... I What's up? I said I'd give you a shout out. It's the longest uh, name ever, but what up, man? Uh, and uh, Nate from Brett's Home Services. Nate and his pops, uh, super, super cool dudes. Um, so what is up? If you want a shout out, say what's up back to me. Say something cool on YouTube. Uh, order something from me and I'll give you a shout out uh, as best as I can. Um, but this week's winner of our $50 credit and the virtual high five is Jacob Von Steen. Von Stein, Von Steen. What up, man? Actually, uh, last, so the generator that we do pulls up the comment, and it was actually like, you got to give me a shout out. So I did one better. You won, man. All I got to do is just email me over your information, uh, name and address, and we'll get that out to you. Uh, the email is josh at window cleaning resource. Make sure to get that out. Cool. Like I said, I appreciate everybody who lets me put in orders and uh, comments and everything else. So thanks. Keep it up, guys. Really, really appreciate it. But this week, we're actually going to be talking about raising prices. Now, there is a couple things to know about raising prices. The very big one that everybody thinks, and especially your customers when they see you raise prices, is that, oh, they're making more money from me. That is obviously part of it. You're going to make more money by raising your prices. But there's a lot of other things going on with raising your prices. And uh, they all sound like excuses, but we're going to talk about them today. Uh, if you haven't raised your prices or you're not regularly raising your prices, there is a problem with how you're doing things, in my opinion. Now, like I always say, I'm just some doofus with a microphone. I don't know anything more than anybody else. So don't take this as me telling you how it is because I don't know, man. You're right. However you do it is right because it's your business, right? But if you're not raising your prices, you're making less money every year. Oh, no. I've tried the same prices for the past five years, ten years, and I'm making more money every year. Yes, you're making more money, but less per job, per hour, per everything. And yes, of course, inflation and all that. But listen, here's the truth of the matter is everything costs more every single year. Every single product goes up. As somebody who sells a product, I know that we get, we just got a price increase from a company that just came in two weeks ago, across the board on all their products. Increase, increase, increase. We finally had to raise our price on the zero pier. Had to, we just had to, for the same reason that uh, we're talking about. If you don't raise your prices, 
Everything that you buy for your business has been more expensive now than it was 10 years ago, five years ago, two years ago. It's more money. You're spending more money on supplies now and still charging these people the same amount of money. Yes, we're talking about percentages, small percentages. I get that. But everything goes up. Now, gas fluctuates. Gas is one of those kind of scapegoat things that I don't really talk about because you never know. Like, by the time I'm recording this show and the time that this show comes out, you could have a 50 cent change in, in, in gas. So I'm not talking about gas, but yes, across the board, gas prices have raised, rose and risen <laughs> over the past few years, right? Yes, of course, they were at $4 or whatever a gallon, and now they're less, but the trend is everything's going up. And of course, the cost of inflation. Now, I'm just a window cleaner. I don't have inflation. Yes, but inflation basically translates to like the dumbest kind of dumbed down version is that everything else is costing more. So you go buy a head of lettuce. It costs you more gradually, of course, you know, not just prices fluctuate, but it's, your groceries cost you more. Your uh, fuel is going to cost you more. Your insurance is going to cost you. Everything costs you more. And the reason is, is that inflation exists and the cost of living increases happen. So... The same reason that somebody in 1950 could have bought a house for $32,000 and bought a car for $3,000 and the wife stayed home and the, because of the way that everything inflates price-wise, now you see a lot more of that. I'm not going to get into economics. That's for you to kind of nerd out on your own if you want, but very interesting stuff. The problem with raising your prices is there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. It has to be done. It has to be done. Because otherwise you're making less every single year, every single day and every single job that you're not raising them. Now, I'm not saying to go out there and say, okay, well, I'm making $65 an hour right now and I would like to make now $200 an hour. That is ridiculous and uh, it is not keeping with what you're trying to do. That is selfish and that's going to screw you if you jump that high. And no one, well, I shouldn't say no one because I've had to do some unfortunately very drastic changes before uh, let me give you a story story time have a seat <laughs> i had a customer who uh had a really um interesting house really nice house if you will and they went and uh put new wooden windows on their house now we did this house for years and they said, oh, good news, we put new windows on our house. We thought, oh man, like pillows or something, this is gonna be great. Love new windows. We showed up and it was wooden French pane windows. Every single one in this old three-story house. Every single window switched over to a, were they three by threes, four by threes, doesn't matter. Real wooden Frenchies all over the house. It looked great. The house was like an old Victorian style or whatever style house. It looked amazing. And they got new windows. But new windows, man, you it was going to be a breeze. It made that job so much harder that I had to sit down with them before we even started the job. And I said, listen, I am truly sorry about this, but the job that has changed, the scope of the job has changed so much so that we can't do it today because we don't have it in the time at all. We're going to have to reschedule you. And if you do want to continue service with us, we have to charge you three times more, I think it was. And the lady was like, oh, yeah, no, definitely, totally understand. This was a big ticket item anyway. But she understood, right? Doing a big jump like that is different than just going, hey, nothing's changed, but I haven't charged you anything more in five years, so now I have to double your price. Like, that is not possible. And here's the big thing when it comes to price changes that you don't quite think about. You think about when it's too late and you go, man, that job sucks so bad. I don't make any money. I'm just going to have to drop them because you're too far away from having to be able to raise that money. But when you first start out, you are going to bid things wrong. There's enough in information out there. There's videos. Hopefully, if you're new, you've watched all of this. There's enough videos and information out there that, um, you know, you could get a ballpark. But he, there's a lot of things that you don't quite know that you don't see later. Okay, there's a bush in front of one of the windows. I can get to the window, fine, no problem. Yeah, but now you have to pull out a pole to do the window because you can't quite get into the bush. And uh, FYI, there's a bee's nest in there every other year or something, right? There's lots of little things that you don't quite notice until you bid the windows, you got in the job, you did it, and you went, oh, wow, that really sucks. Well, maybe it's because I'm slow. May do it the next year. I'm getting faster at it. Still not great, but getting faster. 
And then by the time it is three to five years later and you realize, wow, I charged them way not enough money. And I've had that also where we've gotten into a job, we've done it once, we've done it twice, and went, hey, I'm sorry, I bid this completely wrong. The new price is this, and I completely understand that you don't want to go with us if you decide to not continue. And they go, wow, that's really out of my budget. I wasn't quite pro, you know, dealing with that, and I would apologize. Listen, I'm, I'm sorry, I completely understand. Um, you know, to kind of put you in this predicament, uh, you know, we still clean your windows this year for that price, but just going forward, just, you know, like it happens. I get it. It happens. That's beyond your scope. You know, sometimes it happens. That's the other thing. Like employees suck. We've talked about that. No matter how long you're in business, you'll have employee issues. Like as many employees as you ever have, you'll always, it'll always be a pain in the butt to hire and fire and keep these people honest and doing what you want them to do. Another side of that is bidding. You will be in this forever and you'll still randomly get something where you're like, oh man, I didn't quite notice that. Or man, I really thought we could get that done faster or, you know, misjudging this or that or this or that. So it's always kind of a problem to kind of stay in, but the longer you do, the better. I haven't really missed bid a job in a very long time. So hopefully you haven't either. You kind of learn, but every time that you do bid jobs, you have to think about that, what the future is going to like. So here's some kind of uh, interesting ways to kind of think about raising prices. There's different actual ways uh, or different, not even services, but different things that you need to think about. And first and foremost is storefront. That's always a conversation because Route has a, it has a persona about it of being cheap for being low priced and blah, blah, blah. And I just had this, I just posted two days ago, maybe I said, um, maybe it was just yesterday, but anyway, uh, these people are like, Oh, how much do you charge for storefront? And the standard in mine, uh, what I charge is a dollar a side, uh, per window, per pane, per pane on a storefront and our minimum is 10 bucks. And people go, Oh, you're a hack. You are, um, I can't believe you charge so little, man. You're just, you're gonna, you know, you could raise your right. You could charge more, man. You're charging. Listen, uh, on that job, I'm still producing at $65 an hour. Um, that's our route. Our route is so tight that you can charge a less amount, uh, not less, you don't want to charge necessarily, less. you know what I'm saying. You could have a lower amount than these guys who live in the middle of nowhere and they charge $3 a window with a minimum of $25 because they have to drive 15 minutes to each job. So route is always kind of the bottom of the barrel. There's always going to be some guy will do it for less always so it's very delicate when you go to have to raise prices but what happens is the easiest way that i've found to raise prices in storefront is to have a little letter produced uh, you can even do it in the beginning and say hey every year i send a little letter uh, with the invoice and say hey as of the first of the year our uh, uh, annual price increase cost of living is two percent you could charge two percent three percent whatever that glorif glorified number is but we charge two percent uh as our normal cost of living increase now uh, things may change i get that um but uh as the route thickens you're going to be able to get more done anyway so you kind of see that so even if you think your cost of living increase is three but you're charging two percent you're still increasing because that route will be stronger next time but if you send a basic letter about that, 2% sounds like nothing because it is barely anything, but it's enough to continue to keep increase. So over 10 years now, you've increased that 2%. The next year, you've increased 2% on the 2%, right? It's got compounding interest, if you will. And you continue to rise. Your 2% by year 10 is a larger increment than your 2% year 1. And uh, that's kind of how that goes. You continually improve that job. But listen. If you have a job for 10 years, you don't raise the price once. By the year 10, you hate that job. It doesn't make you any money like uh, because everything's changed. So increasing and having those regular increases, no one cares. And no one bats an eye at a 2% increase. That's a commercial thing to do. That is a company thing to do. It's not a bucket bob thing. They're going to expect it. They hired you because you're not a bucket bob. Um... It's a thing that is very, very easily accepted. And I can tell you right now, I'm trying to think, I have not ever had anybody drop us because of that, ever. 
that's in probably 13 years we've done increases, maybe 12 years worth of since we've started doing those increases. Never had anybody drop us because they understand. They're in business. They understand that all their costs have gone up and all your costs are gone up. They just know. A 2% is so small that it does not look selfish. It is to continue to keep the account healthy. And it is not so you can buy a new boat and a house in Boca Raton, right? It's just... It, they understand that what it is is what it is. But you're keeping your accounts healthy. Now, here's another thing that is super specific, not specific to our industry, but just building businesses in general. There is something to be said for the health of a company being so much more valuable than anything else, than how clean of a window you make, than how uh, you know nice your staff is, uh, how much you know your colors are great, and all that. Other. The health of your company is the health of accounts. Now, the health kind of comes down to this: is that if you can make sixty dollars an hour as compared to fifty, that's a healthier job, right? If you have um, you know. Uh, 10% lower costs this year than you did last year, that's building a healthier company. This just happens to be part of it. Your income here is becoming healthy. It's staying healthy. It's staying relative, and you're not losing money every year, even though you're increasing your prices. Route is a very, very easy one, even though people scare, are scared of it because route is so cutthroat. It's very easy when you lay it out that way. By the way, first year is coming up. If you haven't raised prices, it's time. Make a simple letter to your route guys if, you, if you're doing route and just say, hey, uh, this year, uh, as of the first of the year, our annual uh, cost of living increase is going to happen across the board and it's 2% increase. Um, any questions, please call me. Uh, thank you for always being a customer and being awesome or something along those lines. There you go. They get it. The bill's changed. Um, some people ask too, do you ask before you increase the bill? I do not on a route side of things because they're going to be a long-term client. That's just how things work. It's it's. If anybody ever was like, oh, I just 2%, I'm not paying 2% more. I would simply say, okay, I apologize about that. We'll go ahead and take that 2% off now. Uh, we're just not able to continue the service then. Like, You're going to drop us for 2%? And I'm going to drop you because of, of the type of person I can see you being already. You're complaining about a 2% cost of increase when you are a business owner who's had cost of increase cost of living increase right so it's not happened but that's kind of what i would do you can kind of do it however you want but routes the easy one the hard one for um us is residential and there's two parts of residential there's residential new and residential existing not new construction but new customers coming in that's easy right residential existing that one sucks that's hard uh but here's how it goes with new Super easy, not going to spend a lot of time on it, but as soon as you bid a window, say you're at $10 an hour, or $10 up window on houses, maybe uh, next year you're at 11 maybe the year after you're at 11 50 maybe you're doing your increases across the board, 10% uh, is a high increase on that side of it, but if you are doing general numbers, then your 10% can be then sprawled. So if you raise 10%, so instead of 10, you go to 11, that's a 10% increase. Your 10% then would last you, say, five years. You'd be at $11. Uh, but if that's the only way you bid, awesome. Do your increases accordingly. But if you bid other directions, um, now you want to increase to find where your market's at. A 2% increase on residential new doesn't make sense. But larger increases do. Going from 10 to 11, going from, here's a, an interesting stat. We changed over our house washing. One day I said, I think I'm charging too little. All week this week, I'm doubling my price, literally. Doubling the minimum. We went from 199 to two, uh, 399 I didn't have one person say no. What? Wait, what? Say that again? I doubled our prices, and I didn't have one person say no. New customers. Because the market, we were way under where our market was. The need was there above where uh, our market, that we, we had set it. Oh, they wouldn't do that. Our customers are different. No, no, wouldn't do that. Have you tried it? No, I don't even need to try it. I know. Whoa. Whoa. You are like, you're like a fortune teller? What? 
You can see into the future? Oh my gosh, man. That is crazy because even the largest companies anywhere are always testing the markets for where they can be. So that's amazing that you can do that. But if you haven't, um, do it. Just try and increase. You don't have to go so gra- drastic, obviously. But a new customer doesn't see your old customer numbers. Okay. So as you strengthen a job, everybody from here on out, you're listening to this. From Jan 1, You go ahead and increase your jobs, all of it, from $10 to $15 a window. Do it. Yeah, but people are going to say no. Maybe. That's how you tell. It may cost you some money. You may not have the customers, you know, or or you may see that it's not really working, but you got to give it a fair try. What if you increased your prices by 50%, but you landed only nine out of 10 jobs. You just started making more money. You're building healthier jobs up the future. Now, I know everybody goes, oh, it's the race to the top with these guys that think they can always charge more and blah, 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 but you can. If you could charge more, if right now, instead of making 50 an hour, you can make 60 an hour, instead of making 60, you can make 75. Instead of 75, you can make 100. Why would you not do that? You have to test your market. And new jobs, super easy to do that. Just change the price. Go up a buck. That works. I'm still getting all my clothes. Go up two bucks. Listen, another thing with uh, a guy, Craig, you're probably not watching this, but uh, he was another one. He said that uh, last year he only had two jobs not to sign. You're charging not enough. If you have that much of a close rate, you are either Zig Ziglar or you are not charging enough. It's up to you. But anyway, there you go. Easy, easy, easy on new. New is easy. Existing sucks. That's hard. And the reason it's hard is because now you're going into Jane Smith's dorm uh, house, you know, their domain, their the castle. And you're telling them now you have to increase them. Because instantly, even if they like you, you're still a contractor. Oh, contractors. They're going to steal my stuff and I'm not paying a down payment because they're just going to take it. You're a contractor. No matter if you're nice or you're not or your customer services there are, oh, you kiss their puppy every time you show up. It doesn't matter. You're still a contractor and trying to increase their prices, they instantly click out of that, like, I like you to your contractor. What do you mean? You're going to write, put a letter, put it on your letterhead. If you don't have letterhead, get letterhead. It's so cheap. It makes you look professional. Put it in the letter. Send it out to all your customers. If you have customers that call you and say, hey, Jane Smith, how are you? Good. I'd like to book a schedule. Okay, great. We'll get you in for March 1st. Hey, just as a heads up, uh, our annual price increase is 2% this year. Just a cost of living increase, but I wanted to give you a heads up beforehand. You put it out that way as it's just in passing. There you go. They go, oh, yeah, no problem. They heard 2%. They heard annual. It always happens. I just don't remember last year if you're starting it new. And then it's not a big deal. And 2% doesn't sound like a lot, like I said. 2% of a $100 order, right? Not a lot. 200, 500, 1,000. Not terribly much. 2% is 2%. But that's how you continue to keep your accounts healthy. Now, if you decide to go dollar amount, here's the thing that if you haven't noticed it, it always goes this way in how your marketing is and how your um, stuff you buy is. So a percentage always sounds like less. 10% off. The only way that has any value is that you're spending money to have value. You're actually spending money to spend less money. If I gave you a $50 gift card or a $50 coupon or take $50 off, uh, I'm not thinking about the money I'm spending. I'm thinking of 50 bucks. Man, you gave me 50 bucks. Woo! Of course, it's the same concept. But it's the same thing. If you ever want a number to sound like a lot, you give them like coupons. You want to give a coupon? Use this coupon for $50 off. Not even $50 off, but use this coupon to take, you know, save 50 bucks. Here's $50 worth of services. That is value. Value is a dollar amount. If you ever want something to sound less, you say we have to do a price increase of 2%. Now, that can come across all how you're going to be doing it. But... You have to continue to do that. Now, once you start, year one is going to be the roughest. Um, I have not really lost. I've had more people talk about it, the price increase on residential than I have any other service, uh, commercial, residential, uh, or storefront. But it's very easy to explain. Say, hey, you know, uh, yeah, it's 
it is unfortunate. You know, we hope that we are your window cleaning company for the next 10 or 20 years, which would be amazing. And until that time, you know, every single year, costs of ours go up, cost of living, fuel costs. You could throw that out. The cost of milk is more. So we do have to do a 2% increase. And that just keeps your accounts the same amount of money as it was the year before, before the cost of increase, uh, the cost of, yeah, the increase um, rises. So it's it's very easy to explain it, but to get it out there, you don't want to make a big deal of it. If I made a big deal and I sat you down, I said, Mrs. Jones, I'm so sorry. I have to do this to you, and I, I don't want to do this to you, and I can't believe I'm going to be doing this to you. It's, it's, uh, it's awful, and I, I wish it wasn't true, but... I, have to increase it by two percent this year I'm, I'm sorry you know we have to do this just to be like you made a big deal out of nothing you made a big when you're in a restaurant and you go oh uh, yeah i'll take the cheeseburger oh you want cheese on that yeah they charged you more for that but there was no big deal of course yeah I'd throw cheese on that if they went oh did you want cheese on that's gonna be an extra buck all of a sudden you're like oh that's not worth a piece of cheese right it's how you deliver it. If you, if you haven't, I always tell people, man, do the education yourself and read some books and things on how to communicate with people. It's very, very valuable. But that is residential and existing. The hardest one of all of them. Super doable, but it's very hard. It's just in your delivery, basically, of it. Commercial is probably close to being tied because um, when you get into commercial, raising an existing commercial account is almost impossible. You have to be... Ex- uh, on the high side of the initial. Uh, and now we're talking about like a two year deal, three year deal and things. If there's a contract, you can't do a raise. If you're doing a contract, there is going to be something in there saying that there is an annual 5% increase or something along those lines it has to be written in there because otherwise you'll have this account forever. It'll never go up. And all of a sudden they're, they got, you know, next to nothing. Well, then I secure the job cause I'm a loss. Yeah. But why, when you could be the healthiest. So commercial is very hard. Um, The other thing with commercials is budgets. So you always have to kind of stay relevant, but here's the thing. Even if somebody doesn't lay it out there as doing a 2% increase every year, they are increasing their prices. Your competitor, they're charging more now than they did five years ago. That's a fact. Like that's not just a a number, you know, that, that is a fact. So being able to go and increase yourself just keeps you kind of relative in the whole thing. So new jobs, new bids, if your commercial number is a certain amount, raise it. Raise it to stay healthy. Here's the thing. If you go up 5%, say 6% right now, if you bid 6% higher than you normally would, that's three years of 2%. Of course, it's not compounding. I get that. But you can see where, say, two years, 6% increase over two years but a 6% higher now, that means on those two years, by the time the contract comes up in two years, you're to where your cost of living would have put you, but yet you bid it in the beginning. So it's 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 kind of the way to do it, really. Raise your costs, raise your prices if you haven't. Make a healthier business. And uh, most importantly, have fun on the holidays. Even if you're a JW and you don't celebrate, have fun just chilling for a little while right? You watch some crummy TV, claymation stuff, and uh, just enjoy not working for a little bit. Uh, If anything, if anything, you're back to work uh, as of the first or second of the year, I should say. Guess what? It's 2019. 2019 will be epic and be awesome. But anyway, now it's your choice. Um, Hey, like I said before, if you are ordering supplies, now's your time. Listen closely The code for this week, meaning you call me and say, hey, put my order in 5% off. Um, The code this week is um, 2%. We'll say that. 2% this week is the code. Tell me that and you will actually get 5% off because we're going to just make things complicated. That's why. But really, really do. I I genuinely appreciate you guys who order from me. So please do. uh, 862-312-2026. It's... uh, um, a really nice side effect of doing this podcast is all you guys who are my uh, clients and customers and it uh, really really is awesome I appreciate that um, but anyway give me a call uh, make sure to thumbs up our video if you're watching on YouTube that is also huge or as Chris and Alex would say huge um, do that comment on YouTube that's where we have the conversation text me 862-312-2026 and just tell me the show is okay or you got something from it or you're increasing this year just tell me stuff i love hearing from people so please 
please do. I'm not uh, not a robot. So. Cool. Go out there and raise your prices. And like I said, go out there and be epic.